Today's recipe calls for Greek yogurt. I'm gonna show you how to make smashed potatoes two ways. One's gonna be cheesy, the other one will be spicy. So with that said, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is grab a large pot and some potatoes. The best potatoes to use for this recipe are baby Dutch yellow potatoes. These types of spuds will give us a crunchy texture on the outside, but still be nice and soft in the center. Add three pounds or 1,360 grams of them yellow starchy things to the pot. Give them a quick look over to check for anything that needs to be discarded or check to see if any weird looking spots need to be cut out. We'll We'll be making two different types of smashed potatoes today so you can easily cut this recipe in half once the spuds are in the pot cover them with cold water we need enough water in the pot so that they're all completely submerged next we need to season the water with some salt you want to heavily season the water i added a quarter cup or 55 grams of coarse ground kosher salt to about three and a half quarts or 3.3 liters of h2o now that the spuds are drowned in some salty water, gently toss the pot over the heat source. Crank the heat up to high. You want to bring the potatoes up to a boil. Cook them until they are just fork tender. This process should take around 12 to 15 minutes. While those are cooking, we can make a quick garnish for one of our dishes. Grab three to four medium to large sized garlic cloves and peel all the skins off of them. Once peeled, thinly slice the garlic. We want them to be about one eighth to a quarter inch thick. Grab a small, pan of your choosing and add roughly two to three tablespoons of oil that has a high smoke point. Crank the heat to about medium and allow the oil to become ripping hot. You can test to see how hot the oil is by adding one of the garlic slivers. If it starts to bubble immediately, you know it's ready. Add about a quarter of the sliced garlic to the pan. Fry the garlic until it becomes a nice light golden color. Once it does turn that color, immediately take the garlic out of the oil. They will continue to cook even though they've been pulled out of the pan and will become a darker golden color color. This is why it's imperative to pull them early. Toss the cooked stuff in a strainer to allow the excess oil to drain off. Do this in small batches. It'll be easier to control. After you've made some delicious fried garlic chips, season them to taste with sea salt. Check your potatoes. If they are close to being done, we can start to preheat the oven box. Set the temp to 425 Fahrenheit or 218 degrees Celsius. Grab a potato out of the water. Give them a quick check. If the fork pierces the potato with little to no effort, you know they are done. Strain and drain the spuds into a colander. Allow them to slightly cool for three to four minutes. While they do that, we can prep out some half sheet trays. Drizzle enough oil on the pan until it's well greased. Next, grab a smashing device of your choosing so we can get to smushing these golden nuggets. I'm using a pint glass because it has a good flat bottom and it'll be easy to clean later. To help prevent the spuds from sticking too much to the glass, lightly grease it with some oil. Now simply smash each potato. You'll squish each one until they're roughly a quarter inch thick. You don't want to get too crazy and Hulk smash them. If you do, they will completely fall apart on you. Also, if they are too thin, they could burn during the baking process. Eventually, the potatoes will start to stick to the bottom of the glass. Simply wipe it clean with a paper towel and get back to it. If you're feeling real dangerous, you can also drop an elbow on them to flatten it out, which is kind of harder than you think. The movies make it look so easy though. Once you have everything smashed, grab some oil and a brush. Lightly brush each potato with some oil. Ensure you get in every little nook and cranny. This will help them become golden brown and crispy. If you want to be extra fancy, I recommend using some homemade garlic infused oil. Once you've painted all the starchy things, season them with your favorite spices. After you've made it rain flavor enhancements, grab the half sheet tray and throw it in the preheated oven. Place them on the middle rack for the best results. Set a timer and bake them for 45 minutes or until they become a nice golden brown color. Times may vary depending on how hot your oven runs. While those are baking, we can start making our dipping sauces. Grab a medium sized 
holding device to the bowl we'll add 3 fourths cup or 170 grams of some Greek yogurt. The next thing we need to add is some fresh chives. We'll be adding about 5 tablespoons worth. Cut off a quarter inch of the bottoms and start to cut them in super small rings. It's best practice to use a really sharp knife to do this. Using a dull knife will bruise the chives and turn them dull in color. Once cut add them to the bowl of yogurt. Following the fresh herbs we'll add some confit garlic. If you don't know how to make it go and check out my confit garlic video. You can use this stuff for pretty much anything. This is where you're going to get your homemade garlic infused oil that we used earlier in the video. Grab roughly 10 to 12 confit garlic cloves. Drain off as much oil as possible. Roughly chop the cloves into fairly small pieces. Following all that chopping work, use the side of your blade to smash them into a garlic paste. Be super careful when doing this because things will be pretty slick from the oil. Repeat the same process a couple of times of rough chopping and smashing them. It helps to add a small pinch of coarse ground kosher salt during the smashing process. The roughness from the salt will help the garlic break down a little bit easier. Add the garlic to the holding apparatus and lightly whisk your face off to bring everything into one giant tasty mess. The last thing we need to add to the bowl is the zest from half of a medium sized lemon. Give it a quick taste test and adjust the seasoning as needed with some salt and pepper. Now that the timer has gone off, pull those little spuds out of the of. When they're golden brown and crispy, you know they are done. But we're going to be extra and make half Half of them even more delicious. Shave some parmesan cheese on top of the smashed potatoes. Go as light or as heavy as you wish with the cheese. Once they've been cheesed up, put them back in the oven. Bake them for an additional 5 to 10 minutes or until the cheese has fully melted. Don't leave them in for too long. I left mine in for way too long and my potatoes kind of burned. So uh, yeah, don't do that. After the cheese has melted, pull those golden nuggies out of the heat. This is what our cheesy ones look like, and here are the rag ones. Now it's time to plate these things up. Grab your favorite eating saucer and throw down a good sized spoonful of some Greek yogurt. On top of the yogurt, put a little bit of some chili oil. I have a full video on how to make the spicy goodness. I'll leave a link in the description so you can go check that video out. Add our fried garlic chips for garnish. Use as much as you want to finish off the plate, add the regular cheeseless smashed potatoes. Wrap them around the yogurt for that sweet look. Grab another plate ski and flop a small amount of that garlic chive sauce onto it. Give it a cool whoosh swoop thingy to spread it across the plate. Add your potatoes, stack them nice and tall for that sweet aesthetic look. Now that they're both done and ready, it's time to dig in. Alternatively, you can always skip the yogurt and use sour cream or save the time and skip the sauces all together and just eat the spuds right out of the of whatever you decide to do just enjoy all right now that our smashed potatoes are done let's give them the old taste of room so looking at them they came out nice and aesthetically pleasing this is our garlic parm ones they got that nice melty cheese on top that makes it look super delicious and they came out nice and golden brown as well then our garlic chive sauce looks super tasty as well it has that pop of green and a little bit of yellow in there from our lemon. They look super delicious. Now our regular smashed potatoes look super delicious as well. They have that nice golden brown color to them. Then we got our Greek yogurt and that pop of red with those fried garlic chips that look ultra enticing. So let's give it a shot. Get a little mix up, get a little chip in there. This came out super delicious. The potatoes themselves came out perfect. They're nice and crunchy on the outside, but still super soft in the center. And they have that slight garlic flavor to them from our homemade garlic infused oil. The dipping sauce came out perfect as well. It's the best combination between the two. A little bit of spiciness and a little bit of creaminess from our Greek yogurt. And Greek yogurt has that distinct flavor. So it really counterbalances that chili oil and really pairs well with the potatoes. Kind of reminds me of a sour cream, just a touch healthier. Then you get that sweet, delicious garlic flavor from our fried garlic chips. Overall, this one is super tasty. So let's try the next one. 
These also came out huh, amazing. The same rules still apply to the potatoes, crunchy and super soft at the same time, but the cheese sends it over the top. It brings so much cheesy, delicious goodness to the table and a little bit of nuttiness and some saltiness as well. And our dipping sauce came out perfect. It's super creamy and rich from our Greek yogurt. Then we get so many delicious flavors from our confit garlic and so much richness as well. But then you get a pop of freshness from our chives. But then maybe on the next bite, you get a little bit of that lemon zest that helps cut through that strong garlic flavor and the richness from our Greek yogurt. I can't really decide which one my favorite one is. So I think I'm gonna go eat some more and maybe decide, but probably not. Smashed potatoes are super simple to make and make for a great snack or the perfect side dish to any entree like a piece of salmon or a grilled steak. And you can play around with the flavors and go classic with the fresh rosemary and thyme or you can get real bougie and get rid of the oil and use some duck fat instead to make it extra bougie and delicious tasting. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching. And I'm going to go share these with a few other people and have them vote to see which one they think the best one is. So I'm going to go do that and we'll see you on the next one. This as well. He already said cheesy. This is going to take forever. What is this? Soft and... I don't know. But the cheese on top is super... What was that? These things also came out. Came out. <laughs> so bad at this. The same. <laughs> we do some old school stuff. I gotta sneeze. Maybe not. Maybe so. <laughs> <laughs>